Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will give you a quick farming guide for the next lottery event, the Tumbling Cup 2024. I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel in order to find enough free time to make this video, so this guide will probably not be on par with my past lottery farming guides. Nonetheless, if you still find this type of content useful, please consider supporting the channel by leaving a like and dropping a sub. And of course, if you have any suggestions or feedback, please leave them in the comment section down below. I always read all your comments, even if I don't have enough time to reply to all of you. Starting right away with the highlight of the event, this lottery, just like past ones, is a great opportunity to use all your apples in order to stockpile all the resources that your account will need for the foreseeable future. I just want to point out that since the start of this year, La Sengol has started giving us event with some kind of unlimited farming, usually with a focus on ascension materials together with embers and QPs. Their idea is probably to let us use more apples in other events aside lotteries, which still has the best AP efficiency when it comes to resource gained, in particular for newer accounts, but maybe for older ones you may want more different ascension materials, since you'll probably already have a lot of embers, QPs and skill gems stocked up. This should make sense if you consider that they are still updating a pen skills, which requires a lot of extra ascension materials. This is of course good work on their part, however there is one resource that you can only farm during lottery events, and that is friend points. Unlike all the previously mentioned resources, the only reasonable place to farm friend points is during lottery events. The importance of friend points has only increased with time. Just like in the past, they are the main way to level up your CEs, which requires making C bomb with the low stars you will get from the friend point gacha. It still baffles me that we don't have a reliable way to level up C. They could just make a daily node that instead of dropping embers for servants, could be dropping XP bomb for seas. We have far more seas in the game than servants, and no permanent method to level them up. More recently, friend points are used in order to get enough servant coins to make the two monthly grails. Considering that the situation with servant coins is still not solved in JP, and that the grails are a limited resource, which can help with the boss fights and farming since the start of the level 90++ nodes and super recollections, you can start to see how friend points are a very big deal. Finally, Las Angle has started giving us some very good servants in the friend point gacha. Habitrot, for example, after clearing Lost Bell 6, is the best AoE rider for farming and a fantastic support for solo run for female servants. Avoiding spoilers from the JP server, I will just add that you will get another good free unit from the friend point gacha. So this trend of including good units in the friend point gacha seems only to be growing. Diving into the more practical side of things for this lottery, if you have followed my past guides, you should know that focusing on the new level 90++ nodes instead of the old level 90++ nodes is the most efficient way to approach farming in all future events. In fact, even if you can't 6-slot farm the new level 90++ nodes, by that I mean using only Lotto Drop Bonus C in your party, you can still be more efficient than the old level 90 plus nodes if you can 5 slot farm the new higher difficulty nodes, meaning you will be equipping your main DPS with either the event bonus damage C, a black rail or even a starting and charge C like a kaleidoscope. There are multiple reasons for this, but the most important one is that the level 90++ nodes have an higher drop rate for the Lotto Drop Bonus C. In other words, by farming the highest difficulty node, you'll be reaching an higher Lotto Drop Bonus earlier compared to farming the old level 90++ nodes. 
In other words, even if on paper 6 slotting the level 90 plus nodes is nearly equivalent to 5 slotting the level 90 plus plus nodes, in practice you'll be able to open more lotto boxes by farming the level 90 plus plus nodes. The second reason that it's not tied to the lottery is that the newer nodes are better for bond farming. If you consider that you will be spending a lot of APs farming this lottery, even a small difference in bond gained will be much more evident at the end of the event. Extra bond levels can give us quartz as well as servant coins. And for some still unknown reason, in JP they keep pushing for more bond levels. We'll see what we'll get. Finally, level 90 plus plus nodes usually have better drop rates for ascension materials, as well as dropping newer ones. For all the mentioned reasons, I will be focusing on the level 90 plus plus nodes, giving you either 6 slot comps or 5 slot comps for them. Since we are on the subject, let's briefly talk about the event seas. The Lotto Sea is of course the star of the show, and unfortunately for us, this time around it doesn't give starting and charge. This combined with the unusual layout of enemies in the level 90 plus plus nodes is what makes 6 slot farming them quite difficult. The Lotto C doesn't have pure attack stat, so leveling it up doesn't really help much with damage, however a max limb broken copy will help with refund, as well as giving a little bit of extra damage. Some comps in the following part of this video will require a max limb broken copy for refund purpose, so please keep that in mind. Regarding the damage bonus C, this is the only C I will be using for my 6 slot farming comps, since it's the only one that's available to all of us for sure. You want to maximum break this C as soon as possible, since you don't need multiple copies, and if you can, you should level it up since it has pure attack stat. Leveling it up to level 50 requires only one C bomb, so it should be manageable. It will make a difference when it comes to farming the level 90 plus plus nodes, in particular if you have an MP1 DPS, which will need every bit of extra damage it can get, but a leveled CE will also be required for some farming comps in order to trigger overkill and refund enough. Of course, there are possible 5 slot comps that require different Cs instead of this damage C. For example, if you have a pretty high MP level DPS that has special damage in one node, but lack the charge required in order to use it, then a starting MP charge C will benefit you more than the damage C from the event. I can think for example about Mysterious Arrow in X Alter for the second rotation of the level 90 plus plus nodes. On paper she is the most damaging option, but she lacks the charge required to use her in both a 6 slot comp and a 5 slot comp with the damage C. So in this case a starting MP charge C like Kaleidoscope is the way to go. This event features 3 different rotation of free quests. Rotation number 1 will go live immediately at the start of the event and will last for 3 days. Rotation 2 will follow and will last for 4 days. And finally, rotation number 3 will cover the last week of the event. Since each set of free quests will be different, it's important that you prepare beforehand and decide on which rotation you'll spend most of your apples. If you have watched some of my older farming guides, you should remember that in cases like this one, with each new rotation, the free quests will get a flat increase in all their drops for both lotto currency and event shop currencies. By flat increase I mean that it's not influenced by your total drop bonus, so basically you just get a fixed extra amount for each run of the free quest. I have done the calculation for some of my older farming guides when level 90 plus weren't even a thing yet, 
and despite this increase uh, seeming small, if you spend enough apple farming that specific node, you will see the difference at the end, with some extra lot boxes you'll be able to open. All I have said so far, assume that you don't have any preference when it comes to the tree rotation. Since that's probably not the case in practice, you should focus on the rotation for which you can break the highest drop bonus. Secondly, if there is a specific ascension material that you need, you can use that as a secondary criteria. And finally, if you want to increase the bond level with a specific DPS, you can also choose the rotation that will let you use that specific servant. Since your team will be a full set of 5 star C's, you won't be able to bring an higher rarity servant in the back line for bond farming so it must be a damage dealer for one of the three quests. As a final note regarding the drop rates shown on the screen, the second rotation seems to have an higher drop rate for the lot currency, but that's probably the result of a lower amount of statistic data, since in JP this one has been the less farmed one. By compiling and ranking all the different farming comps for the tree rotation, I can give you a general idea on which rotation is easier to farm. Of course, I'm only referring to the level 90 plus nodes. Starting with the first rotation, this one is an outlayer when it comes to level 90 plus nodes so far in the sense that you will have a much easier time using single core farming comps for this node, instead of the usual multi core farming comps we have seen with past level 90 plus plus nodes. The main reason is the layout of the enemies in this node that forces both the primary single target DPS and the secondary AoE DPS to use their NPs two times which is not ideal in a multi-core farming comp. If the Lotto C had started an MP charge, it could have been manageable, but sadly that's not the case. So for this node you will see standard looping comps with a single DPS. Personally, I think the main reason this node has been farmed more than the second rotation is that you can buster loop with Melusin. As a final note, we are considerably lacking when it comes to single target lancer that can loop or single target lancer with big self and charge. In fact, Melusin is the top dog in both categories, not even counting that she's arguably the best AoE lancer in the game at the moment, at least when it comes to farming. So this deficit in the Lancer class definitely pushes us towards single core farming comps. The second rotation, as I have anticipated before, was the less farmed one in JP. The layout of enemies is similar to the first rotation, but this time you have one less enemy in the first wave, and that means less refund for art servants. And furthermore, in the final wave you will have different classes of enemies, with both the Saber and Lancer Servants. And this limits the choice of your secondary AoE DPS, since you'll be restricted to either Berserkers or Pretenders, at least if you want to both clear the lower HP enemies and help the primary DPS with the damage. Despite these additional restrictions, this node has a larger amount of farming comps available compared to the previous rotation. The reason is that the Archer class is a much better class suited for farming, for both AoE and single target needs. We have both good looping numbers and big self and child skills, unlike the previously mentioned Lancer class. Furthermore, Arash is a staple in this node, basically letting us clear the first wave for free if you don't mind the extra slot in the party, which you would have given to a lower rarity servant anyway, since party cost is very strict with a full lineup of lot seeds. Of course, you can still use single core farming comps for this node, but 
been open to the multi-core farming comps definitely increase the number of available comps for this node, even if you may need to reserve an extra slot for a rush. When it comes to the third and final rotation, things are much simpler. This is definitely the easiest one to farm for both multi-core farming comps and single-core farming comps. The layout of enemies is much kinder to us, with three enemies in both wave 1 and wave 2, and a single berserker enemy in the final wave. Having three enemies of the same class in the first two waves greatly helps with looping your MP. In both single core farming comps and in multi core farming comps, if you want your secondary AODPS to also help with damage in the final wave. Speaking of this final wave, with the single enemy being a berserker, we have a much bigger pool of servants that we can bring to deal with this final enemy. For both single target servants in a multi-core farming comp and for AoE servants in a single core farming comp. As I explained before, this final rotation also happened to have the best drop rate for lot of currency, with the flat increase kicking in. So this final rotation is definitely the winner when it comes to level 90 plus plus nodes. It also lasts longer than the others, so you have more time to farm it. In the following part of this video, you will find a ranked list of all the best possible farming comps for the three different level 90 plus plus nodes. Without going too much into details when it comes to my personal ranking system, suffice to say you will find a six slot farming comp first, and then five slot farming comp that use only the damage bonus C. So no comps that use a starting MP charge C, like I said in the previous part of this video. The secondary criteria that I've used for my ranking system is availability. Farming comps that use a free servant or a lower rarity one will be ranked higher. Then I will list farming comps that don't require double support. That way you can for example borrow a friend level 120 NP5 DPS, being able to use a 6 slot comp for that specific node. Finally, for the comps needing double support, I will restrict myself to those that can work with reasonable MP levels, so NP2 or at most NP3. So forget about double MP5 level 120 servants in the party. With that said, I will leave you guys to the farming comps. As always, if you have found this type of content useful, please let me know by leaving a like, a comment and subscribing to the channel. I'm really scraping up the bottom of the barrel in order to find enough free time to make these guides, so your support will really help me keep going. In any case, thank you very much for watching, hopefully I will see you again next time. Bye bye.